Wednesday's a, a, a fun day during football season because we're caught between one week and another week. And you never really know. Do you look back? Do you look forward? What do you do on Wednesday? Well, sometimes on Tuesday, something falls into your lap that requires your attention on Wednesday. And Chris, this one is a first for me. Handshake gate. The rant from Richard Sherman, the 49ers cornerback, right. after the Monday night win over the Cleveland Browns, to Michael Silver of NFL Media, who has an existing bias against Baker Mayfield based upon his relationship with former Browns coach Hugh Jackson. It's right. clear. It's undeniable. And I don't think anybody's trying to push back against that. But Sherman went over the top with his complaints about Mayfield snubbing Sherman and DeForest Buckner, another 49ers captain, before the coin toss. And the way it was set up, the way it was characterized in the story, it was clear that Sherman was taking the position that Baker Mayfield did not shake his hand before the coin toss. And that was baked in all morning long. This idea that Mayfield was acting like a punk and going out there and not shaking the hands of a member of the NFL Brotherhood, and I was critical of him. I was like, look, you can't do that. This is not college. This is not high school. You have to behave a certain way. And of all people, Mayfield should know that because he got snubbed at a game between Oklahoma and Kansas, and he was upset the rest of the day because he got snubbed when it was time to go out for the coin toss and shake hands. So by noon or thereabouts, I caught wind of video evidence, Chris, suggesting that there had been a handshake. Now, it took some time to get the smoking gun. There's the smoking gun, if you're watching. That's as smoking as it can get. There's a handshake. And, and you know, the story shifted. And it's funny, Chris, because initially, the evidence that came out was inconclusive. And Richard Sherman seized on that with a screenshot saying, he didn't shake my hand. He didn't shake my hand. Well, those tweets have now since been deleted once the conclusive evidence came out. And I'm left to wonder, what in the hell is going on here that Richard Sherman would have that so wrong? Did he misperceive it? Did he choose to fabricate it, not realizing there are cameras everywhere when you're at midfield of an NFL game before kickoff? I, I can't understand this. And then I, I throw in the NFL wrinkle. They had access to all those videos. They have in-house video. They have NFL Films video. You can check and look at the video before you run with this major story about how Richard Sherman was snubbed by Baker Mayfield. Yep. I, I, yeah. I, I'm stunned by this. I, I'm, I, me too. I mean, on so many levels. I mean, okay, so first off, I understand people being um, a little jealous, mad, whatever it may be about Baker Mayfield. I mean, he is getting treated like he's a superstar and has not earned, you know, let's say is, you know, per se is his stripes yet as far as the NFL is concerned. And there used to be an NFL culture of where, you know, quarterbacks didn't do commercials and things like that until you won a Super Bowl or won a certain number of games to establish yourself as that, you know, NFL elite type quarterback. And I'm sure it rubs some people the wrong or the, the wrong way when they see Baker Mayfield on national commercials and things like that. And they go, gosh, you know, he doesn't how many games has he won to this point in his career? What is it, 11, 12? I mean, somewhere in that range. Um, so I understand all of that but what I don't get first off from that video we just showed there obviously shook his hands uh two if you want to really get into like who really blew who off here Baker Mayfield it gives everybody the hug and the handshake dab Richard Sherman won't even look him in the eye so I mean if we're going to start the disrespect conversation it starts with Richard Sherman let alone the hypocrisy of Richard Sherman is absolutely astounding. You mean the guy back in 2012 on the team that hadn't done crap to that point who followed the legend of football Tom Brady off the field with you mad bro is now going to teach us about respect on the field? Are you freaking kidding me? And then to lie about it because it looks like Richard wanted attention or something, I don't know. And it's a bunch of BS. That's all I can say to this point. Yeah, and it really was a perfect storm of events, Chris, because Mike Silver was the right guy to bring this to because he's going to look for anything to criticize Baker Mayfield. That's proven now. And I think if I'm at NFL Network, if I'm an editor there, I I'm saying maybe the next Baker Mayfield story goes to somebody else because th there is something going on here. That Hugh Jackson friendship that Silver does not try to hide. He's very open about it. So I guess there's some, some transparency there that allows us to notice these things and connect these dots. It does create 
an opportunity, a window for someone to jump on this story and run with it without bothering to think maybe there is video that would either confirm that there was a snub or would debunk what is being said. And the way it played out yesterday with little pieces that were inconclusive that gave Richard Sherman a chance to double down and triple down before the conclusive video right. came out right. and he started deleting tweets and saying, oh, this is no big deal. Why are you making it? You made it a big deal. You made it don't, a big don't deal. Try to, don't right. backpedal now because you've been caught with a falsehood. And you that's made what it, it a was. big it deal was a- and wanted the attention for it and was enjoying it when it was a thing. And then you got proven wrong and then deleted it and act like, ah, I don't care. I'm not going to lose any sleep. Okay, fine. Here, great. I, and here's what I, when there's a situation like this, because I've been doing this 18 years now. Our our 18th anniversary of the launch of PFT is coming up November 1. And we get criticized all the time. And and I can deal with it. I'm so used to it now. It's like sliding into a really hot tub. At some point, you just get used to it. And you think, hey, you know what? This it's a small price to pay for not having a real job. But I think about the ways we would have been criticized if we had done this story. And we definitely would have been criticized for not looking at the video. And I tell you another way we would have been criticized, and this is exactly what happened here. There was no effort to reach out to the Browns. There was no effort to reach out to Baker Mayfield to get his side of it. So when you know there's video and when you know there's another human being involved in this process... You need to do that before you just run with what ultimately ends up being BS. And I know people are saying all he's doing is passing along the quotes that were given to him. But don't we hear all the time now, especially in political reporting, you shouldn't just pass along what someone says if it's wrong. There's an obligation to look into it, especially when it can be easily confirmed or debunked. The videos were everywhere. Baker Mayfield is still alive. He can be contacted for comment on whether he snubbed Richard Sherman. And maybe he would elaborate on your point, Chris. Hey, I was ready to hug the guy. And he gave me kind of a look. He gave me the side eye and he kept going. Yeah. I mean, he didn't, he, he acted like he was not there. That was the least like personal handshake out of everybody in the group with Richard Sherman. Look, he can bear, he doesn't even look at him in the eye. He just walks right by him. Tells you there was like jealousy and animosity before it even started. He wanted some issue. And that's the problem with the whole thing anyways. I mean, yeah, I'm disappointed in Michael Silver. I, I mean, I like Michael Silver. I know him. He's a great guy. Uh, but I'm disappointed in the fact that, you know, okay, Richard Sherman's been a pretty controversial guy. I mean, the fact that we're just going to take what he says and run, run with it you know okay that's questionable one two you know there's video of the whole thing I mean come on it's 2019 there's 20 videos of the whole thing so to to not check that out and get a little bit more of a you know deeper look into that yeah that's annoying too and and what's more annoying than anything okay and you want to talk about old school and respect to the game again Richard Sherman your team's 4-0, and and you came off the biggest victory and a dominant victory, and we should be celebrating that, damn, the 49ers are one of the best teams in football. But instead, one guy took, a, took all the attention and made a, a controversy out of a lie, out of BS, and ran with it until he was totally exposed and then tried to act like it's no big deal. That's just BS. I throw the challenge flag. Al Riveron overturned the rule, and you have uh, the BS meters full. Sorry. And you know what? Baker Mayfield will have his midweek press conference today in advance of a game against the Seahawks. And I can't wait to see what he says. And and I and look, based upon I who knows what he'll say. Maybe it'll be some sort of a snide comment. Maybe it'll just I, I but I, if I was him, I'd be upset. You know, he's already going to be the target for plenty of criticism that is warranted. When criticism comes his way based upon false facts. And think about this, Chris. The truth came out by 1 o'clock Eastern yesterday. Yep. There was no revision, no update, no removal, nothing of the story that was at the top of the stack on NFL.com until 3.58 p.m. So for three hours, they knew the truth, and they didn't bother to add an editor's note or otherwise revise that story, and that impression was allowed to bake in, and that's the problem here. There will be people who will forever think that Baker Mayfield disrespected and snubbed Richard Sherman and DeForest Buckner at midfield before that Monday night game. And all that Baker Mayfield, he's a no good so-and-so and he's this and he's that. And it's all based upon 
what ultimately was a falsehood. Falsehood, and he's not the first guy to run off and go to his sidelines, certainly, after they see the coin toss. And that, think, that's baloney, too. That, that's the fallback. What? That's the, hey, I've been caught red-handed with my, my hand in the cookie jar, and I'm going to change the target. I'm going to move the goalposts and say, well, I was upset because he ran away after the coin toss. But that's not what you said. Yeah, no, you said you're right. He didn't it's, shake not what your you hand. Said. it's not what you said. You're right. And he's not the first guy. I've seen guys do that all the time throughout the NFL on a weekly basis. And it's, it's very sensitive of Richard Sherman to force Bunker, Buckner to want a second one. I mean, oh, gosh, you needed a second handshake? I mean, who cares? No, no, no. no. That's ba- that's Baker. cover. That's cover. Yeah. That's that's all. Be I don't even give that any credence. And look at what's on the screen now. The quote from Richard Sherman: "They are making way too big of a story of a blowout. You made the story out of this. Nobody else made a story out of this. You lit the fuse on the bomb that exploded once Michael Silver published it at NFL.com. It was the story of the morning. Everyone was chiming in on how Baker Mayfield disrespected the game, and then the truth started to emerge. Right." He- He's the one who tried to make a big story of something that was founded on something that just didn't happen. It really, I, you know, we've seen a lot of crazy stuff over the years. I can't think of one like this where it's just ridiculous, but it's also compelling and fascinating because I, I guess Richard Sherman thought he was going to get away with it. Uh, yeah, I guess so, but he didn't, and now he looks like a fool, and he's a BS, and I don't, I can't, I can't take him at his word anymore. That's over. All right. All right, we, we got to go. We've, we've probably gotten ourselves in plenty of trouble for the things. But you know what? I stand by everything we said. I don't think we crossed any lines. You use no profanity. I encourage you to use no profanity. I think we're safe. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.